So basically what we're going to do today is take some old designs I had and we're basically going to be creating the, some new variants that will be populated as uh, NPCs out there in the world. Give a little more variety of different cultures and different uh, things to encounter. And so these were like an old base version of the centaurs that I did. Oh, man, I probably did these like a year, year and a half ago. It's been a while. And basically what I would do in my process, so like if they gave us me this assignment, what the, would be the next step to quickest way to find some variants and clothing and stuff. But yeah, what's up, Dog Trot? The, um, let's see here. So I think the idea we're going more kind of like Scottish medieval warriors for these. So that's the kind of inspiration I have. And so we're going to go with that. What's up, Anthrage, your boy? Abiquar. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually block, push this whole thing back. I have a whole layer. It's just like a flat color layer, but I can just push it back so I can still see the piece. And then we're gonna do some line drawing sketching on top of it. We did a little, we did a little shave anthrage. That's what we did. And then it kind of grew back and shaved again. I'm all over the map. <laughs> The same no home stream. It's kind of it, we treat it the same here. We don't have cool pickles, but those pickles exist in our heart. Can we start bringing you pickles? That'd be amazing. Do you have a preferred brand? I, I do not. I'm a fan lover of all pickles. We eat pickles on stream sometimes. It turns the, the, oh, bre yeah, the bread and butters. I like bread and butters. Yeah. yeah, well, I don't discriminate against pickles. I like, like them all like equally. <laughs> you shave everything off as well, actually. Itchy as all heck, yeah. It's going to start getting cold here. Well, coldish. If we can actually start using our water again. All right. Well, you guys, you guys can use your water. Mm -hmm. Scumbag. It's just Austin City water that's garbage. We, all right. Uh, we're non shoddy You feel like you've initiated a pillow? That's all right. That's the best thing to initiate. So I'm going to kind of trace over some shapes of his, his body here. And we're going to refigure out some of these forms. Especially since this is a pretty old sketch. He's got like a weird arm. And we're gonna change his beard shape, uh, everything. Palem is boring, that's true, that's true. They have to have like big red Scottish beards, you know? They can have kind of like, it can be like handlebars. This stage that we can really do, most things that we want, we're not tied to anything. This stage is good to be like super loose. And some of this hairstyle, like, you want to keep as much as you can with this to look indifferent. You know, time is always a factor you should think about when working on these. So maybe, like, for this one, we'll keep his ponytail. All right, let me pull through my steps a little bit different than I usually have it. Centaur Rangers, I don't think we ever get Centaur Rangers, do we? Can they be rangers? I don't think so. Centaur, no. Minotaur. Minotaur. So basically, it's just me drawing the line shapes of how I may want to do armor. These guys, obviously, going to have some type of kilt action. Obviously. <laughs> Super obs. We'll have his chest sticking out, although shouldn't be a problem. I assume all these parts are modeled. I assume. So basically we're just gonna jam like this. I've got my kilt reference up. Maybe we'll have like one shoulder piece and nothing on this side. But even when we get the full drawing done, that quick sketch, that's when we're gonna go underneath and start blocking out 
just to get rid of some of these shapes so I can just read it a little bit better. And these should all be like pretty simple stuff, simple things. It's a lot of this process till we start cleaning up over and over. So Andrew had a question. Sure. Uh, in terms of methods of delivering clothing variants, what modifiers are available? Does it include things like color, particle or glowing effects, and other modifications to existing clothes and armor? Yeah, I think we definitely want like color variants as far as clothing and armor goes. I think that's usually like one of the easiest things you can get in, right? I'm, I know we've talked about it, so. Something we definitely want to get in there. You know, there are racial gear sets coming in terms of additional art. I have no idea, actually. Probably, but don't hold me to that. I have no decision making on anything. I am but a hand, they tell me to draw something and I'll draw it for them. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> yeah, we're basically, we do, you know, we do what we're told here, like this here. Just some quick little dance motion. Yeah. It's pretty much what happens. So these are like really basic versions, and then we'll go over them. <laughs> Sky looks ridiculous. It's gonna be weird to figure out how a kilt actually works on one of these. One of our first versions of the centaurs actually was one of these Scottish ones. Which is kind of what made us want to go back to the idea of it. You know that old caravan shot? That was our first depiction of a uh, druid as well. Like the old witchy druid. Kilts on horses are easy. I mean, I guess you could just throw it along the back, but... We gotta figure out like a kind of a kind of a cool way to do it. I was gonna say, did you ever see that how would a horse wear pants meme? Yeah, I know what you're saying as far as like Barton goes and like kind of draping on the back. It's doable, but they also have like their front legs are kind of treated more like actual legs. Like if you cut off the back of the body, it's almost like you're seeing there. So I wanna do it like Barton. Well, we'll see, we'll see. Let me look at some uh, some shots here. I have some cool draped ones, and there's some draped ones that just don't look very good. Let's try something. That's pretty cool. All right. And these guys would be living out more kind of like in the wilderness too. So I want them to feel a little more nomadic. One like different sacks of gear and stuff maybe on their back. And we're gonna give them different weapons. You'd be pretty messy with this stage. It's really like the subtle stuff on his back that I really want to figure out as far as, you know, we could drape, you know, a lot of stuff all along this. I just want to figure out some more things of interest to do. It's 
just figuring out like good ways to layer it all. I always, I always find it's, I think it's good to be messy at this stage, then you might get some like weird little things that happen that you didn't really plan for, and then you can use that to your advantage later. Maybe we'll just gradient some red in there, from brown to red, instead of going straight red. Could be more interesting. Uh, most of these other things we want to change too, so if we give them, um, let me see here. Ah, da, da, da. Let's get rid of these. We'll get some sleeves underneath. Sorry, my mechanical keyboard probably hear it clicking like crazy. It's like this sound. People can usually hear my I hit the bracket keys like crazy. I change brush size like repeatedly. So oh you always hear this. It's a really cool line where the front legs drape to the back and create a nice curve. Yeah, we definitely do something like that. Let me go back to um Right, it depends how much we want to put all over them. There's something we could, I just want multiple layers. I don't want one large drapery hanging, you know? But we'll get into those details. There's still a lot to figure out of what all these specifics of all his armor and stuff is. We should try to figure that out. I think might actually break up his this right here. Have this be a darker color. I think I'll cover up the top. Maybe. And we'll keep flipping it. What's up, Coolster? Coolster, this isn't replacing the original ones. <laughs> yeah, these are fusion ones. These are fusion variants. Uh, these are just variants. We said what these variants are for, right? I don't think so. How are we supposed to talk about this then? I don't know. Because I don't think that we've talked about that. We've I'm, I'm like going to talk about it in about five seconds three, then. But they haven't like gone over these guys playing into it specifically. Which is why I was surprised that they told you to do this. <sighs> Sigh. <laughs> What's going on around here? What is happening? It's fuck wild, man. I think we, we mentioned that NPC variants. We have talked about... Uh, well, I said it. Th there you go. You, you you broke the seal. We've talked about roving bands, like the, 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 the tribes, but we haven't talked about how they fall into that, necessarily. This is not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> tell us the goose of war. I gotta tell people what I'm painting. This is really confusing. I think Val's on her way over. Val says stop. Stop. I'll be right there. <laughs> She's just gonna come pull the plug. <laughs> you guys need to give me some information then. I want to pay them. I got the least amount of information. We're just painting things to pay them. We're just making these pretty boys. You like to look at a female once given the mail? Yeah. We had, so this was an old um, version. We were going, I think before I was trying to head into like more of like a Native American vibe. 
that was trying to push, and then they went definitely more Roman. So this is definitely an old piece. This is an old one. But I still thought the look of her was pretty cool. I think that would have been a cool direction. I always loved her face paint. Yeah, I think like the face paint stuff. And I was gonna do some. We can do some like Scottish face paints on these guys too. Image is a little bit lower res than our being. Mm -hmm. I think this this version I'm working on is pretty low res. I think that's also when you when it feeds through here, it's gonna look lower resolution. Cool, so it's gonna be even lower. <laughs> no, it's gonna look higher to them. <laughs> What's up, Meta? No worries. You're you're just on time. What, that's what's good about concept, at least. So even if that version of her head was not made, then it's totally fine. We have it banked as a concept piece, something we always go back to later. All right. Just throw some ideas in of where some of these buckles are going to be. Like this is like the mega messy version of a painting. But sometimes it's necessary in these beginning stages. I'm not going to spend time on like a line drawing. We can take this and then <laughs> coolster. Can't give me trouble, man. <laughs> They put us on here. We can't say anything. When we do, we, we get in trouble. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Should we mute the mic? Can I scoot in? Maybe. She's here. <laughs> Hi. Get clearance. Okay, should we meet the mic or the killer of fun? Um, <laughs> Do you want me to meet the mic? No, uh, no, it's okay. All right. So here's the deal with the centaurs: is that we are going to have some as like PvP mobs. Yeah. So that's what you're working on: is things that that players might be able to fight. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, you okay? <laughs> stay stay in those lines. Color in the lines, Dave. Stay yeah. in the lines. Right, I was just right. saying that, but then you just explained it. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid you were going to say too much. And like Gordon told me, we've got a new sheriff in town, Sheriff Debbie Sue. Yeah. Who, yeah. Had to make her happy. It's like, have food in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry All right, no me. worries. Sorry we're good to go. Representing the killer of fun. <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? What? I'm a good noodle. Very good noodle. You are a good See, noodle. See, she's not here in this part right here. Well, you're a good noodle? <laughs> yeah, you can say whatever you want right I now. I know. You got like 20 I was agreeing with her that that's exactly what I was saying. <laughs> then she explained it now. It means I wasn't. <sighs> uh, what are we painting on? I'll start painting pickles here. Okay. Just, just, just go, go rogue and paint an Elkin. Whatever you want. I know we were gonna do some Elkins too, which would have been cool. All right, let's do some new bracers here. That <laughs> was sass dog trot. Don't make me sass you, man. <laughs> He's trying to get you in trouble. Dog trot is just obsessed with my large mug that I have at home. Oh, I see. I was like, your face? Cause... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I try to be a good, a good noodle. And now I, I can't, we can barely drink coffee because we have a, in Austin, we have to boil water now. We have a contaminated water supply. So we have to bo um, boil all our water. It's, it's insane, actually. It's such a, it's more pain in the ass than I thought it would be. Drinking water is fine, but it's the other uses for your water that's a pain. Yeah. And we boil a ton of water, and it's fine for drinking and stuff. But every place that serves coffee is not serving coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sophia can see you. 
It is, it, my mug is not even that large. I think it's the way that I hold it to the camera. Dog try it, it floors him. It takes him out. <laughs> all right, all right, what, what are we doing here? We're figuring out the shapes of these pieces and how they're all gonna work. They're also gonna be pretty simple. <laughs> you can't. It's amazing. It's the only thing that gets me to keep painting from like midnight. It used to be one. I can't even stay up that late anymore. It's knocking me out. It's starting to lose your edge. I know. Sometimes I can do it, but you get pretty drained. <laughs> I'll be putting the socks to work. I'd be alright with it. Put, they put me in the socks. They just give me like a little Wacom tablet down there. We'll be alright. <laughs> I'll make do. Sacrifice your health for art. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, we're always sacrificing our health for art. I should be getting like three to four more hours of sleep per night. You need to stop going to the gym first. I know. Yeah, well, I get it. I'm out of hours. What time do you wake up? Six forty-five. Isn't too bad. I usually bed at like one thirty. God, I wake up at six forty-five and I go to bed at ten. You. If I went to bed at ten, I wouldn't be like, I wouldn't get, I couldn't not get anything done. I get at four thirty. Yeah, what time you go to bed? You go to bed at like seven. Oh my god. My kid goes to bed. <laughs> Yeah, it catches up to me some days, and I have to just really crash really hard. Oh my, I thought drinks spill everywhere. Only a little bit. So I'm not sure we could do, start incorporating some of these other colors around. This beginning stage, I really don't, it's like I said, it's super messy, but it's okay. Just tell yourself it's okay. Embrace the mess. Everything's fine. We're gonna do it. Guys, we're gonna get through this stream. Together. It's gotten a little rocky, but <laughs> we're gonna do it. I wish you wanted the dark oh no. We are gonna be giving away that Huon tablet too, which is gonna be sweet. Everyone's gonna tell me that the uh, it's gonna be rigged, but I will not rig it. I swear. What are you guys talking about? It's really. So you can get Do I not understand how Photoshop works, or is the Photoshop window stuck? I'm not sure I understand the question. How is your uh, Photoshop window stuck? The Hulu table feeds be interesting? That's true. Maybe Blair can uh, thrill you guys with some loot tables next time. <laughs> it's not a good stream unless I take a couple pop shots at Blair. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it here. Probably why I get like disgruntled looks from Blair sometimes. Does he just randomly shoot you looks? I think so. And you're like, what did I do? I was like, and you think back to a stream. Oh, yeah, I was like, yeah. oh, yeah, I right. talked about it. <laughs> Snarky. The Photoshop part of the stream was not moving. Oh, weird. Probably because I was, I might, I probably wasn't painting. I get distracted. I'm just going to uh, block out some shapes, get a little more form to his beautiful beard.
Are you helping uh, Dog Trot? Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, the, Dog Trot, they'll get you all hooked up. Absolutely. Dog Trot's a good man. You guys should hook, help him out. I always think it's Dog in disguise. Dog Trot? Yeah. Oh, that's true. This is his uh, dog run. I know, so close. It's I so close. Reminds you of Tormund? That'd be, that's actually a good call. I could look at some Tormund. Tormund is pretty awesome. I miss that man. I miss all of them. Man, some of this image is just so old. I think I'm trying to make sets just for future playing. So, so making like cloth, leather, and plate looks for all characters that we do. Because, you know, who knows how things get repurposed. Like we can use different pieces on different characters. Who knows? Just to plan it out. So I think I'm looking at this one like it's some type of leather variant. Definitely wouldn't be plate. I'm not sure what we're going to do for for plate, or if I even need to do a plate variant for these guys. But it's good to have variants when you encounter them out in the world, right? So I might do the same thing again. I do this, you guys see me do this with like a lot of my paintings. So I kind of knock things back a lot. So I, I like to, I do like to get the clean line drawing in there. I want to do, I love this brush down here. Let's grab this one. It gets pretty sassy. Hope you guys have the bush lady. What? With Brian? She's not a bush lady. And then we can. Is this the right brush? Guess so. My pen pressure feels different. Let me see here. I think the image size on this is was not that small. Make it bigger. Yeah, Anthrage, I usually have these go for an hour. Half an hour seems too short to do any type of painting in for me. So this we might be able to get some more flowy lines at least and It's more interesting here. I'm actually going to change a bunch of these shapes. So in the future, you know, I think it's still in discussions. It's no guarantee in anything, but you could definitely look into doing like some longer art streams. It's easy enough for me to paint in here, and bother John all day. Just sit here and talk to yourself. All he day. does look pretty happy about that. <laughs> I love having you in my hand. <laughs> yeah, I have um, their entire skill set embedded into the sketch. So if you stare at it long enough, it's like one of those magic, you know, pictures. They'll show you all their abilities, their stats, um, and some like future content that we're planning. Do I miss using real paper and pens or is electronic the best way to go? I do miss using paper and pens. I, I miss painting traditionally a lot. It's the time aspect. It's not feasible to do concept art with traditional art. Uh, for the speed that you need to turn stuff around, it's even less about the speed is ability to make iteration based on a creative director and art director's feedback on how to, you know, if they want to see a quick change, Having it down real paint that makes it really really hard. 
But yeah, I, I miss it. I wish I could spend more time getting back into uh, acrylic and oil painting. I would love to do more traditional drawing and kind of painting over sketches. I would, I would love it. I'm gonna start crying. Sometimes all the uh, digital work can feel kind of like mechanical. You do so much of it, it all kind of becomes work. It, I mean, you can get into a piece, but I think with traditional work, you can really get lost in it. And uh, that's what I, I prefer, just to disappear <laughs> into it. Let the world fade away while you're... I think that's pretty common. Yeah, it's a good escape as an artist or whatever you're into. And that's always like that type of high you get when you, you're in a piece and the piece is working and you see it working and all the steps that you did beforehand start coming together. You get so hooked into it. I think it's that type of feeling that always gets you coming back. We're getting kind of you know here. yeah about how artists feel and that kind of high you get and how you get so obsessed into it i, I think it's definitely something that exists and i know i feel when you get really into a piece or into any art project or something that's that's working or that feeling when you look up and like four hours have passed yeah it's like all you want to do is get back into that piece and keep painting. Or, you know, any project, like whatever you work on, probably John to feel the same way. When things are working out, you're seeing the fruits of it and what what it could become. You just want to give it your all. I don't know what that has to do with doing traditional work, but <laughs> just let me feel, please. It's so hard to feel anything. Again. Am I going to want to paint any dragons sometimes? If they want me to paint dragons, I'll paint dragons, but that's not something I've heard about. We had Alison here for a long time, and she was did all our creatures. Her creature designs are always so much better than any creature I could have made, so yeah. it was awesome. <laughs> so fast to agree. Man, he did, he just There's no like, no, I mean, you could you could do a couple, you know, a couple were all right. Now hers were so good is it was an easy choice to have her do all the creature stuff. So it's nice to go around and do this kind of line drawing on top and then we'll go back, figure out some more details. She's the best profile employee, Doug. You didn't get me, you didn't get the hands. <laughs> <laughs> No, she, I, uh, she's amazing. Not sure what these little doodads and shapes are, but. I have trouble finding any sort of release window on the game. Dr. Yeah, that is that's certainly nothing that will come out of my lips. That's for sure. I already got it, don't worry. Okay. <laughs> You were led into temptation, Belantis. That's okay. I, I live off temptation. Do you mainly use Photoshop or do you use any other programs? Do, do I mainly use Photoshop? Yeah, these days it's pretty much all Photoshop. I used to use uh, Curl Painter a lot way back and then uh, Photoshop started getting a lot of the features that Painter had. And I swapped over and it's really, I just have like Creative Cloud and I just use Photoshop now. I feel like everything I want to do with my painting, I can do it here. I do use Sketchbook Pro sometimes. Uh, Sketchbook Pro is pretty awesome. I bought it about two weeks before it went free, which is awesome. <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Adam? Ilk is, how you guys doing? Being part of the art side of Crowfall, how much do you know about the other parts of the game? Like what the engineers are working on? Uh, 0%. Uh, it's, it's worse for me than anybody 
else in the team. Most of the other artists work with other engineers stuff. I feel like concept and engineering is the furthest spectrum of game development. Totally I am so, I'm lucky if I know their name. You know, we say hello in passing. I assume they're working on something that progresses the game and makes it playable. I assume that's what they do. But yeah, we're so, you know, and what I work on is so far away, especially when they're implementing stuff. That's even after the R team makes it. So they're could be working on something that even was part of something I was in production of a year ago or two years ago. Or it's just system stuff that I'm really not involved with. So basically, I do my best that I can to help the project on the get-go and hope that the, the parts of the team that tackle it further can pull it all together. So that's a big part of why I, as a concept artist, this part of development is usually the slow time for, for concept. Uh, so I try to put as much effort into helping you guys get eyes on the production of it. I'm trying to show you, still doing more marketing work for the game just to help keep as much momentum on my side for the rest of production as I can. When it's usually kind of a little more hands off for concept when we've been in uh, production this long. So I'm, I'm trying. These guys just have some like weird closed fists. We'll just give them this one right here. Hmm. Dog Trout's got a good question. Oh, that is a good question. That okay. Hey, Melanie. And hey, Danny. By the way, sorry. I gotta. Yeah, say hi to These, good people. Are good, good people. <laughs> These are good people. These are good people. These are good people. All right, so that, that depends. Do you like weird ice cream flavors? I know what my favorite ice cream flavor is. Okay, what's your favorite? And I can't find it down here, so... Favorite? So that's a weird one. What's your favorite ice cream flavor? I... Mm, I don't know if my... Fish food. What? Yeah, the, uh, the um, Ben & Jerry's fish food. It's got the little chocolate fish in it. Oh, okay. I was like, <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> I've, uh, I don't think I've ever had that. Fish with a pH. Is that really like a flavor? That's getting like specific. Oh, well, how, how specific are we getting? Are we just going like general flavor? Who blinks like first? Oh. Strawberry. <laughs> um, I like black raspberry. Black raspberry ice cream. Okay. Very common in Massachusetts, but I can't find it. I when I lived in Florida, I couldn't find it anywhere, and I can't find it down here. Huh. What's up, Blazing? I feel like black raspberry and a good vanilla bean would be awesome. Mm, let's try it. Rum and raisin. I don't think I have had rum and raisin. Ben Jerry's New York Super Fudge Chunk. Whoa, that sounds really good. That sounds good, too. I have eaten an entire gallon of Rocky Road by myself in one sitting before. So, so are you telling me you're just like, all of a sudden you just hit the bottom I of the just, tub? Yeah, just, you're like, and I was like, oh, no. And then you just cried yourself to sleep. <laughs> you're like, you're so <laughs> gross. <It's> terrible. <laughs> Uh, this is not going to have a background. Uh, someone had asked that. Uh, Belantis. Uh, this is just a piece for modelers to model some stuff for the characters, so there's no sense uh, spending time on background. This dot underneath his eye makes it look like his, that's his eyeball. That's not what we want. The pull arm. This was an old concept of pull arm, and it's not... Uh, I did have kind of pull arm. Well give this guy a different weapon. He'll have like a big two-hander, but I don't think he's going to have a pole arm. Or a pole arm's not in the game? No. Huh. Interesting. I'll help you guys fight that fight. I'll be honest, though. I'm zero help. They don't care what I say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I know. They're like, guys, we should put a polar on something. They're like, Dave, can you just go back to your desk? I was like, well, I tried. <laughs> I, I did try. They're like, just go do your coloring. Get, yeah, get your, cray get your crayons back out. It's playtime for you. Try not to eat all the glue this time. Can't help it, though. So good. 
<laughs> That's when I really feel alive. When you get your crayons out? Yeah, and the glue. And the glue. <laughs> my fingers are stuck to my face. <laughs> How much do I play Crowfall? I used to play Crowfall a lot. Lately, I'm waiting until we get past a certain little stages, and then I'll get back into it. We're definitely going to be streaming Crowfall, too. I'm actually super pumped. And then everyone that's really good at Crowfall can just destroy me and be really embarrassing, but I'll try, because Crowfall is absolutely, like, my type of game. Like, I played EVE Online for, like, nine years, so the idea of that, the fantasy elements and the aspects of EVE that I love, yeah, it's really perfect for me. Oh, pull arms are in there. Oh, yeah, that's true, because Legionnaire doesn't exist anymore, right? So there's no pull arm. Yep. What? Dog Trot? Really? Transcendental Raccoon has a question. Uh, Transcendental is also good badass. People? Yeah, another, he's another good people. Does style matter much for concept art? For example, semi-realistic, painterly versus comics versus photo bashing? It depends on the studio you work for. The studio that you apply to has a, a specific style, and they're going to want that style. So when I worked for THQ, they very much wanted photo bashing, photorealistic, military type art. Uh, for me, it was very unfulfilling as an artist. But, you know, if you go work for places that more stylized art, or if you go work for Riot or Blizzard, you're going to have to do stylized art in that vein. They're not going to want you to stray from it. They have a... Even to the point that if you apply to them, you're going to have to make specific portfolios. I know it's a lot of work, but... And I've talked about this before, that if... You want to work for Blizzard? You're gonna make have to make a very World of Warcraft, Hearthstone looking, you know, Overwatch slash portfolio. Especially like these bigger studios that have so much to pick from, they want to know that they're gonna get exactly what they want and for their style. They don't want to have to determine it. But you know, if you want to go work on like Call of Duty and stuff, you're gonna you want less um, stylized stuff and more realistic concepts. So it's very specific. It's kind of a pain, but. That is kind of where we live. That's what we got to do. And we're kind of in between. I definitely, we have pretty stylized look for our characters, especially how they look in game. So we don't use like any photo bashing or anything uh, here. So I'm, I'm always trying to embrace more shape, more color, uh, but we're not getting overly cartoony either. It's almost like stylized for adults. So that, you know, it's kind of like a weird description. But that's what I'm sticking with. This is, uh, this is an adult game. <laughs> can centaurs and humans breed? If you close your eyes, they can do whatever you want. <laughs> would you recommend indie versus large companies such as Blizzard for creative freedom? Uh, for, no, I would always recommend indie studios if you want creative freedom. Um, I like small studios anyways. You're gonna have, you have more control over the project and your input's going to matter more. The larger suit you go to, the more of a cog you're going to be, especially if you're just starting there. That's just my opinion from being at small studios and also being at EA and THQ. And I, I love the uh, small studio feel. You know, large studios can throw some big perks at you. You know, free cereal, stuff like that. Which sounds silly, no, that sounds cool. but that's a big EA seller. You go in there and they have like their break rooms are all like cereal dispensers, like out of the walls practically. And you're like, oh man, I never have to buy breakfast again. But and I, I remember guys that stayed there. They're like, oh, I really want to leave, but but free cereal. Yeah, they're like, but you know, it's just so easy just eating cereal, and it's like crazy, man. <laughs> We've been trying to convince Max to get us a snack wall for the longest time. A snack wall. Yeah, he would do that too. Like, they get crunched and they have, like, a snack room. Yeah. It's kind of dirty, actually, but... Sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Any advice on getting into the gaming industry if you have an art background but no real practical use of your degree? A lot of grads in my class had paid bills and felt like getting into the industry. Um, I, the biggest thing that's going to matter for getting the, into the industry is your portfolio. Um, I wouldn't even worry about your degree much. Yeah, cereal and pickles. Oof, just not at the same time. I love pickles, but I got to draw a line. <laughs> if a pickle floats <laughs> out from the milk right in the middle, I'm just like, whew, I'm like, I'll eat it. 
but you're not gonna like it. But I'm, yeah, I'm not gonna love it. The um, it's all gonna be about your portfolio. You know, most studios don't even care about your degree. If you do the work and you're a good person to work with and you're easy to work with and you're gonna help the team, it's really like that is the number one thing. Is just an awesome, awesome portfolio. It's gonna get you in the door. It's gonna get you an interview. And then having good, you know, person skills when you get in there for an interview helps too, but your portfolio is going to get that interview to happen. It's going to get a response. There's a bug. Oh, is it like that? Okay. Awesome. Yeah, it does get you through Anthrage, but then like the resentment comes in later. What kind of tablets would you recommend ours to buy? I guess it depends on your budget. I actually did just test out that one of the Huon tablets. It was actually pretty awesome, and they're super cheap. I think the Huon tablet's like eighty dollars. Really? Yeah, and I—I I mean, I didn't have to spend much time using it. Like the pressure sensitivity felt good. It was super easy to hook up. I think it was definitely worth. I mean, I love the Cintiq monitors, like the Wacom. Yeah. Wacom, I guess I've been told I've been saying it wrong, which I know I have been. I know I have been <laughs> I'm trying to fix it. That Wacom Santique, and which is was a life changer for me, but I also used it into its tablet for like 13 years and did the trick. But I find that I paint better on a Santique. I, I can get a little more involved with it. I feel like I'm touching the monitor, the canvas a little bit more. And that makes a big difference for me. I can spend more time doodling, getting some details out. He's got like a little, he's got like a yoga mat on the back. For some light stretching. He doesn't want to pull a hammy before he goes in the battle. Yeah, you can't. You gotta take care of the hammies, man. Does the whole CF team or part of it go drink a beer or two sometimes? That keeps me sick at work. Yeah, yeah, we go. We go out. We hang out. We do stuff. And, uh... We do like team functions, which is pretty awesome. We do like, you know, team movies once in a while. It's pretty badass. And you guys may think I'm saying this, but this has been like the best place that I've ever worked. So and I wouldn't just say that at a company I was working for. Cause I definitely, when I was working for THQ, I did not say that. And I did not say that publicly. <laughs> If I had said that while working at THQ, I probably would have vomited. I can say that even more openly now since they don't even exist as a company anymore. I'm going to get Data Swiss Sunny with me because he finds a black raspberry. I will find some. I like a black raspberry frap. That's my favorite milkshake. We say fraps up in Massachusetts. That's what they Wait, are. Wait, just everything's a frap up there? Yeah, like, they don't, nothing's called a milkshake. It's just a frap. What is wrong with that state? What's wrong with everybody else? <laughs> we got fraps and we got jimmies. That's it. No, no. Yeah, jimmies on your ice cream and you got a frap if you, it's a milkshake. Jimmy's is actually a brand. Yeah, well, not to us, man. Yeah, we know. <laughs> What about the Red Sox, Dr. Trot? What about them? What? That's what's wrong with mm. You're on. It's too nice, man. You're right, Dr. Trot is good people. Ah, oh, man. I said such good things about you, Dr. Trot. Such good things. It's crazy. It's turning. It's turning so fast on me. <laughs> Next thing you're going to say, Tom Brady's not a god. That I just will not accept. That's true. We do call him steak and cheese, not a cheesesteak. You know, it's funny you said that. I've actually never noticed that. Really? Yeah, we've never called him a cheesesteak. Like, if you go over a steak and cheese. 
So that, that's that's definitely pretty lame. If I, if I that's definitely a lamer place, way to say it. Yeah, if I went to a place and I was like, I want a steak and cheese, I imagine a steak with cheese on it, not like <laughs> a sandwich. They put it like on a roll. It's got like just a cooked steak so with steak. some melted cheese on top. That does not sound as good. Yeah, no, that doesn't sound as good at all. No, that sounds awful. I'd be like, I don't like either of these things anymore. <laughs> Yeah, we don't. I never found that we said hoagies that much. Some, I think, some parts of Massachusetts did. Um, I grew up in like Central Mass. We didn't say hoagies as much. We did say wicked a lot. I used to get in trouble uh, in school. It's how much uh, I used to say wicked. Oh my god. You got in trouble for saying wicked too much? Yeah, my teacher was like, that's not like a real word. You shouldn't use it. Like, I write it and like, even things like, oh, yeah, that was wicked good. And, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, that was wicked awesome. And I remember she, my teacher trying to tell me to stop using the word wicked as much. I know we say it a lot, but it's not like a real <laughs> English word I should be using. She was trying to curb my Massachusetts out of me. Isn't wicked you walk? That's true. Wicked is. Bless his, bless his heart. I do always like doing that lion brush. And we've not been talking about this piece for 20, 25 minutes. We just talk about Massachusetts a little bit. You know? I, still, I still have all my family up there. <laughs> We gotta figure out. I remember we made some like really stocky horse legs here. All right. Oh, we'll just curl his tail around. Are Ganesians Ewoks or Crowfall? They kind of are. I can see that. It's a pretty wicked thing to say. Yeah, it was. Was it? I actually pulled out a lot. I think over the years I stopped using it more and more since I had moved away. I actually don't say it that much anymore. It kind of makes me sad. Maybe I'll try to bring it back. Maybe. Willow is a great movie. I love Willow. I heard they were going to try to make a second Willow. Really? I heard that, and I, that. I don't think that's a great idea. But <sighs> these kids I know eating Tide Pods all the time. I can't. I don't know what they're doing. <laughs> I'm not cool anymore because I won't eat Tide Pods. But it's all right, I guess. If you've seen the state of Val Kilmer, I have. But I think he got in shape again. No, but he was really sick, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was throwing throat cancer, oh, yeah. I thought, yeah. Yeah, he's in real rough shape. That's really awful. <sighs> All right, let's. We're going in dark territory here. I, we're, it up, I know. Oh, man. Well, <laughs> guess we'll keep working on this character for this game. Someone else is near death, but... <laughs> no, he, he got better. He did? Yeah, that's what... Okay, all right. Well, things are looking up around here. Things are looking pretty good, then. That's your little ray of sunshine today. Yeah, I feel good. I feel good now. <laughs> What's up, Frankie? Another good person. Another good people. There's a lot of good So many good people here. in here. But at least we can see. So let's pop back because I think we only have uh, one or two more minutes. Yeah. So this is basically a process how we go to dress up a new character. So we had this guy. We actually did some decent progress on and trying to figure out what will be the new look. And then as we take this line drawing, we'll start putting more darker, saturated color, real texture, real lighting on them. And then this will something that will get passed off to the modeling team. And then. They'll model it the way they do, and then this will get in game eventually. Like we said before, I'm not sure specifically on what or how 
or when or why, but I've been tasked to, to create them. That's what we're doing. <laughs> Mediocre, most likely. All right. Well, <laughs> I was giving you a good person, good people, good peoples and good times. Let's talk about Patrick Swayze and said, yeah, this, we're going to have to cut it then. <laughs> oh, man. Ugh. But guys, thank you so much. I think we're getting ready to wrap the stream up. Um, like always, definitely check out Crowfall. Um, so are, how often are we still streaming every week here, or is it just once in a while? It's uh, a, couple times a, month. a couple times a month streaming here. These streams, the Crowfall Live is once a month. Um, and then occasionally we'll do other streams as part of just the new subject. Okay, awesome. Yeah, there's gonna be all this monster stuff all, all month, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so awesome guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Sorry we got a little sidetracked at the beginning, and uh, we love all your guys here at Ice Creams as well. Black Raspberry for life. It's wicked good. <laughs>